Okay, so this one is a little bit special. I'll try to cut it, uh, keep it short, but uh, the main reason I want to do this one is that it's kind of at the base of uh, many future video what I'm going to do, and it's a very important question to ask yourself. And it's uh, how much care is too much care. Uh, so when you have a, in a low resource system, uh, what, how can you make uh, decisions? And uh, I'll put a link on uh, another course that I, uh, the Coursera kind of talks about, about allocations and kind of um, how to approach that. It's more for uh, higher end um, medical decision, but still it kind of uh, touched a little bit the subject. Um, so let's do a little thought experiment. So imagine that uh, you're uh, the driver of a trolley, and there's different, uh, I'm sure many people heard that, that uh, um, story before and there's different variants of it but uh, you're the driver of a trolley and uh, you have no more brakes uh, the only thing you can do is decide if you're gonna go uh, to the left and if you go to the left you kill only one person and if you go to the right you kill all those people so one two three four five people so you got you have there's no other way you cannot stop the, the train you cannot do anything else you can the, somebody will die and then this is the question are you gonna kill one person or are you gonna kill five person and basically what would you do and so uh, you can even pause the video a little bit ask yourself the questions and stuff and really think about it not just about like Oh yeah, I would really think because like this person here uh, could be someone that you really care about. Could be your wife. Could be your uh, companion. Could be your family members. Could be somebody else. Uh, but do uh, is the individual basically is um, more important than co the collectivity, or is the collectivity uh, more important than the individual? And basically, this is what they call the trolley problem, and you can search, and I'll, I'll put a link. There's, like I said, there's different variants. There's even the variants of um, if, for example, you could push someone. So let's say you're outside and you can push someone. So literally, you are responsible for the death of the person. To save other people, would you do it? And it's kind of a act different. It's very interesting um, to solve, and it's called the trolley problem. And like I said, I'll put a little link about it. So why are we talking about this? It's because in the situation that we may be facing, so we're talking about disaster, collapse, or any situation that you want to create in your mind, um, we may not have all the capacity that we have. No matter how well we are um, prepared, no matter how much uh, we are prepared, that means that when the grid goes down, when the system goes down, all we have now is that's it. That's the limitation until we can re replenish and we don't know when that's going to happen. That's all the resource that we have. And so the question becomes, if I have to treat someone, and, and this is a question I find it's not doesn't come very often, uh, but uh, like in other videos, because they always talk about, well, if I have someone X, I'll do B, and uh, if I have Y, I'll do Z. But should you? When is caring uh, too much care? Uh, if you have someone that really need like needs antibiotics, but your chance of uh, surviving from this infection or the the, the way the person is uh, like if let's say they let's say they get shot in the abdomen and they would need antibiotics and dressings and I mean we're, we're talking about massive trauma here but in a situation where they would be in a collapsing situation so a collapsing uh, world what are their chance of survival and so I want to introduce a little bit of concept. I did videos like that on, on, in the past, but I want to revisit that, that uh, concept because it's really important because a lot of my preparation and videos that's going to come has this philosophy behind, is that when resource become limited, we have to switch our mind to saving 
the ones that uh, not saving uh, the individual but the well of the uh, the collectivity and that means even if it, it, it is this is where the different the the danger well not the danger but the uh, the ethics becomes very difficult is when it's somebody that you really care so if that person that got shot in your belly is someone that is uh, close to you or that you really care about or something and a friend or something like that to apply the same uh, uh, tactics and, and the same strategy that we're going to talk about it's not an easy situ uh, situation so if it's the other person that is on the other side of the trolley and it's your friend would you kill five people for your friend and it becomes that that question because um, if you uh, use a lot of your supplies dressings and things like that you that's what may happen because if you use all this and the person still died at the end well those all those dressing antibiotics anything that you have tried just because you have to try something uh, you may have lost uh, capacity to to save other uh, like five other people maybe all the dressing you use was for five other injuries that you could have done something if you would have had those things and so in uh, disaster they have a concept called reverse triage and basically in reverse triage like you can see here from a um, uh, little uh, excerpt from a uh, research that they did uh, in disaster is that it can um, uh, provide um, a search capacity that means that during a disaster what they do is in the hospital they go through all the people that are admitted and they start discharging people at home even if they're not really ready to go home but if they're not as sick as the other people that are coming that way you can save much more people than the other people and increase but reverse triage is the same thing because when you do a triage is that you tree so basically you choose the person that is the sickest and you provide the most resource you have to that person so when you call to the hospital that's what they do the, the nurse in front that's what they do they do they do triage and so they see who's the sick the sickest not the sickest so you can be seen before but in reverse triage it's totally the opposite the people that are very sick and there's a very low chance of survival don't get as well as much resource because you try to keep the resource for more people than one person and uh, there is a actually an algorithm and you can see here here and I'll put a link down on on research they did it's one that is pretty much uh, thing and it's called the salt s e l t algorithm and the reason that they did this one it, which it's changed from if you compare it to other like uh, the um, uh, other other triage um, algorithm uh, like start or jumpstart in uh, in disaster is that they introduced this thing is that um, assess individual assessment and if you cannot control the hemorrhage if you cannot control the uh, so you'll do minimal intervention but if the person is not doing better you you stop you don't give them more treatment you don't provide them more um, resource because you try to keep your resource again for those five other people they're gonna follow that person and so where would that fit in her preparedness and actually in my own preparedness is that it fits as if I assess someone and let's say a major um, um, major burn and there's very low chance that I can do anything for this person I'll switch to what I, we call palliative care so I would switch to palliative dressings that means that my good dressings that we all talk to how how well it can save someone and everything and stuff I wouldn't use those ones I could I would probably use my uh, my cheapest dressing try to still do something for the person but not provide my best resource for that person because my other resource may be used for someone that I ha has a better chance of survival a better chance of things um, so it's it's a hard ed ethic question it's a very hard question that I'm in like yes I'm saying that we're you're choosing who lives who, who die kind of and it, but it has to be done 
and especially in a, in a situation that you could find yourself in uh, because because of that because you don't have the resource or you don't have like the all the, the material that you would have uh, continuously like right now in a hospital that's why when you go to triage they'll put a lot of resource and everything because they do they, they have a lot of resource but if like in time of disaster we don't have those resource because the num the demand overpass the uh, the availability of resource and so now like concept like uh, when you showed up in the ICU who gets the ventilator if you have 10 ventilator and there's 20 people coming 10 people have to be without the ventilator and you have to decide who because you only have 10 ventilators um, so it's a concept that uh, sadly it's not very well uh, discussed I find in, in, in the YouTube I don't know why because it's a very it's a corner cornerstone uh, concept because all your preparation all your things that you're doing you always have to keep that in mind am I throwing out um, resource to somebody that has a low chance of survival or I have to withdraw a little bit still try to do something but uh, not as 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 much because um, in case that something um, else happened and, and then I'll be able to help better uh, for example that's another, like the example I was giving about the the wound so if I have a very severe burn like 50 percent 60 percent of their body in a period outside a hospital there's very low chance of surviving for those but in if I would have to take care of those that means they would take pretty much all my antibiotics my pain medication my dressings they would almost empty my whole clinic so for somebody that has like a very low chance of survival but does that mean that I just like you know put them in a corner and let them know there's so then that's the concept of palliative care and basically what it is is that you never stop being a, that's a little um, nice uh, uh, quote so never stop being human to the last stage of life we never stop experiencing the full range of human emotion palliative care is about dignity of respect it's about quality of life in the final stage and so at those ones that's that's kind of like I was saying so instead of putting my good uh, dressing maybe I would put some of my improvised dressing so for the person that I would have like all those wounds there that's maybe when I would use uh, sheets or things like that that I would still try to do a uh, scare but if I lose sheets versus the, the AGs and the, tw the 21st century dressings um, sheets are easier to replace than the 21st uh, century dressings that could help someone uh, not pr prevent infection and everything as 60 percent of their body they, they for sure have like they even in a very high high acuity and care they barely uh, survive so th the chance of them surviving outside without those cares is very low uh, so I wanted to bring that concept uh, because again it's going to be a cornerstone of a lot of the videos that I'm going to be doing the lot of concept I'm going to be talking about and so that concept of reverse triage is very important to ask the question um, I would uh, suggest that you read that salt um, three it's kind of have like some good questions a good algorithm and uh, I'll talk to you soon